Hello, and welcome to the eighth in a series of films about the standard level organic topic. Um, here we're going to be looking at another um, alkene reaction um, that's very useful in making plastics, and it's called addition polymerization. So, um, hopefully, you'll understand why it is that things called alkene monomers will join together in big long chains and these big long chains will be called addition polymers and you'll be able to represent these reactions using equations and not only that um, you'll be able to show what something called a repeating unit is and you'll also know some uses for some of the plastics that we make this way okay so let's start off by asking the question what is polymerization now to understand this I mean the title of this film or the subtitle was um, plastic daisy chains that's because um, a polymer is a little bit like a daisy chain, I suppose you could say, where the monomers are the daisies and the polymer is the chain. Okay, So the monomers are the links in the chain, in other words. right? So monomers will usually be small molecules that can be joined together to make these enormous long molecules called polymers simply by joining lots and lots of these repeating units together. Okay, Now, this is or the type of polymerization that we're going to look at here, this isn't the only kind, but the only kind that we need to know about for the standard level course is something called addition polymerization. And just like we saw earlier, the word addition as opposed to substitution means that we're simply adding things together. There aren't any byproducts formed, okay? So we don't have to swap one thing in for another thing out. We simply join lots of things together, okay? So bearing that in mind, um, let's have a look at why it is that alkenes polymerize. Now what you'll see in this diagram here is that there's something called an initiator there okay, and you can see that it's got this uh, unpaired electron notation next to it again. Okay, So this is, this, this is a free radical and that's what makes it so reactive. Um, but we don't need to know about what gets this reaction started. What we do need to know is that alkenes all have double bonds in them. Okay, so here we've got up the top of this diagram, so in the top half above that arrow, we've got the monomers that we're putting together. So these are like the links in our chain. And each one has a double bond. And these arrows kind of show the double bonds opening up. And every time a double bond opens up, each of the carbons that had the double bond, and this is really important, it's the carbons that had the double bond that are now able to join to others. Okay, so once you've opened these double bonds up, if we show on this diagram, perhaps we'll highlight them in green, these are the new bonds, okay, if we ignore the one that was made to the initiator, okay, and that's because every one of these monomers was able to form a new bond with the monomer next door, okay, so we've got three new bonds which are shown in this polymer chain. So here is our polymer chain. Now, as we said before, Polymers are extremely long molecules, so it makes sense to have a kind of shorthand way of representing their structure. And we do this by showing the repeating unit, because if the chain is made up of just one link over and over and over and over again, then you don't have to draw the whole chain to show what the chain looks like. You can just demonstrate that you know what the link looks like. But quite often, uh, the kind of question that you get is, what would the ch what polymer look like, assuming we used three monomers to make it? Okay, so if I put these three alkene monomers together, here we've got one, two, three ethene molecules, right, because these are alkenes, double bond, unsaturated, two carbons each. Okay, so if I, it should be a very, very simple task, because really all I have to do is imagine that there's an extra bond sticking out of each end, okay, and then I'm going to join them together and make this polymer here, okay, so I'll just make sure that I've got the same number of links in my chain as I had monomer units to begin with. What you'll also quite often see is this thing here, this kind of this whole number N. So if I have a whole number of let's say ethene molecules, C2H4 like these, then I can write an equation for this reaction simply by saying right okay they're gonna join together to make this polymer which has this repeating unit, okay, 
and outside of the brackets I show that the bonds carry on in the chain and that the chain has n of these repeating units. So it's really a very very simple equation to write. All I have to do is basically break that double bond and show it the spare bonds sticking out of the bracket and make sure that my polymer has the same repeating units as I started with, except minus that double bond of course. Now it's simple but there are kind of pitfalls and quite often um, propene, which makes polypropene, is used as, uh, as one that quite often trips people up because what you'll see, depending on how you draw propene, and this is really quite an important thing, depending on how you draw it, it can either look like, it, like your monomer has basically got three carbons which are going to join together, okay? And that's the mistake that people make. They go, oh right, okay, so if I was given that, then the repeating unit would look like this. With those spare bonds sticking out of the brackets and then these carbons all having hydrogens. But notice that it's these two carbons that are going to make the monomer join to others. Okay, So in other words the bonds have to attach to those two carbons. This one here isn't going to be making a bond to the next monomer. And it's much clearer to see this if you draw the monomers in a particular way. So if you're faced with a monomer that looks like this, if you can always get in the habit of drawing your monomers out in this kind of a geometry where we've got two things sticking up and two things sticking down off the two carbons that have a double bond then it now becomes very very easy to draw that polymer chain without making this mistake and then we see that these CH3s stick up or down I suppose off the chain but we're not including it in our repeating unit okay well not as part of the chain if you see what I mean okay um, the other type of question, see so far we've looked at writing equations for a polymer forming from its monomers. The other type of questions that you get are look at this polymer chain and decide what monomers it was made of. And this should also be a very similar problem because really all we have to do now is go right well we know our monomer has to be a double bonded carbon, two carbon atoms double bonded. So let's just break our chain every two carbons because then we'll be able to see if we put the double bond back in, we can see our repeating unit in here. If we put our double bond back into it, then we can see what our monomer was. Okay, So it's really a very, very simple task. And hopefully, if you can make sure that you just follow some simple rules, like breaking every two carbons, or drawing the monomers out in a certain way, then these questions should be like a banker, really, in the exam. You shouldn't get these wrong. Another thing to watch out for is, is polystyrene, lots of different forms of polystyrene to, uh, to do with the way that the benzene rings in the structure are arranged. But again, these polymer chains might look very different and if you were asked to draw the monomer that they were made from, you might think, well, they're all going to be different. But again, just split the chain every two carbons and you'll see that every one of these chains has exactly the same monomer. Okay, So just watch out. They can be made to look different, but if you follow this simple routine, break the chain every two carbons and then draw your monomer out with a double bonded carbon and the four things attached to it that you see here. So one of the carbon has two hydrogen atoms. Okay, That one there has two hydrogens attached to it. This one here has an H attached to it and a benzene ring over here. We haven't really covered benzene rings so far in this topic, but it doesn't really matter too much. It's just whatever. It could be X, Y, Z, you know. So it uh, should be a simple task, but it can be made to look a little bit confusing. Okay, last thing to cover in this film is some uses of these polymers. Um, it's important that you can actually not say why these different polymers are used for the things that they are used for, but that you know some specific uses for these three particular problems. Um, Polymers. So first of all we've got polyethene or polyethylene called polyethene because it's made of lots of ethene molecules. Okay, So that's used for a lot of plastic bottles and plastic bags. Polypropene, this is the one that we were showing earlier, is a bit of a trap Okay, to fall into. Okay, Lots of propene molecules. This is made, uh, one of the major uses for polypropylene is um, 
this kind of weird plastic rope that you see quite a lot of the time, but also these kind of hard plastic containers that we use. And PVC, probably one of the most used plastics in the world, polychloroethene. So this is made of this monomer. We've got an ethene molecule, but it's got a chlorine atom attached. So that used to be called vinyl chloride, that molecule, but it's now called chloroethene, according to this new system of naming. So there's lots of these molecules in it, and that's used for making plastic pipes and also the insulation on electrical cable, which is an enormous use, surprisingly big. OK, so hopefully now you know not only what a monomer and a polymer are, but how we can join monomers together to make a polymer, and how we can use equations to show that and also how we can envisage what monomer was used to make a polymer and what polymer would form from a particular monomer. And not only that, but you've got those three uh, specific polymers as uh, things that you need to remember a use of. As usual, of course, if there's anything there that didn't make sense or you want something explained in a bit more depth, um, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.